Hello everyone, Genesis Rider here with another Genesis Tips and Tricks video. Today I'll be looking at some neutral flag gameplay on the map Longbow in Big Team Battle. Now this game type and map combination was recently released into Big Team Battle, and it's a little bit new. I am playing with some really good players, including uh, Flash the Fifth and even uh, Blazing Spartan 24. So thank you very much to those players for playing with me. Really good job overall here. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar, in Longbow Neutral Flag, the flag spawns on a little forged out platform beside top center B base. And the secondary importance objective is obviously going to be getting into the Banshee. So that's the two main points of interest that we have off the start of the game. While there are other power weapons, you're not going to really see a whole lot of that sort of gameplay from me off the beginning here. I'm going to sprint straight for the Banshee using the box on the side of the base to jump up. I have mobility so I can sprint infinitely and get there as fast as possible, as well as does Flash the Fifth right behind me at this moment. Now it is worth pausing right here as you can see three enemy players, three or four actually enemy players are engaging us around the Banshee. Our goal is to stay on this side of the Banshee, avoiding enemy players until one of them tries to get into the Banshee. Optimally here, we would be able to kill off all the enemy players before they get the Banshee. However, normally that never happens as smoothly because players like this one run in through the bottom. And it's, it's going to be the safest to run in through the bottom of the base and sprint straight up to the Banshee, jumping up to it and getting straight into it, as Flash the Fifth did here behind me. Why I'm breaking this down so clearly is because it is important on your decision making of how you get the Banshee. And because uh, the flag does spawn top center, um, we do have a, play, a teammate going for it. It's just really important to recognize um, the strategy as to getting the Banshee. And that is to wait if, if you're not going to take out all the enemy players. Okay. And you know you can't. It is crucial to wait until you see someone getting into the Banshee. Then, as the hatch closes on top, you're going to see Flash the Fifth do this very beautifully here. As the hatch closes, get really, really close to this side portion of the Banshee and hijack it, okay? If you're hijacking the Banshee, it is impossible for an enemy player to hijack it. As you can see, I take out this one other guy and get this guy rather weak over here. Um, it's impossible for them to hijack it, and it's also kind of impossible for them to know. As you can see, my teammate is able to hijack the Banshee, pull it all the way out here, hijacks him, this guy falls out, and gets killed. So instead of just getting the Banshee and driving away, we hijack the Banshee away, allowing one more enemy player to die in the center and respawn back at their base. And this is a really good position, as you can see the enemy sniper right here, watching the Banshee very closely. And it's really just of importance to know how we perform in this specific area, mainly because it allows us to get the Banshee back to our base and have him stay alive, as well as the flag, which you can see the flag carrier running underneath me. Now, obviously, in neutral flag, we need to be holding top center, okay? And I'm just going to protect our flag carrier there, and then I'm going to rush top center. The main reasons for this being that the flag resets top center when we cap it. So we need to have control of the center of the map so that we can relay the next flag directly back to our base. You do not want to get, bring the flag back to your base and then capture it unless your teammates are ready top center to get the next flag. This is extremely important to understand. And I really hope that, um, I mean, I'll say that so many times in any neutral flag video, just because it's so important. So right here, I probably shouldn't have reloaded, but I do end up dropping down and taking out this player expertly. We just capped the flag and our teammates have control top center. So we're gonna immediately relay that flag back. Great use of the thruster pack here as I get away and I'm able to curve back around, letting my shields regenerate here. I'm going to jump, and it's really important what I'm doing right now is keeping constant awareness and pressure on their side. While we do have a really good Banshee driver and he's going to keep the pressure on the enemy team, it's important for us to realize that there are flankers that can get around the edges of the map and probably get to our flag carrier. So right here, I notice a flanker, and I'm going to back up and help my teammate who saws him for the assist. I notice that our Banshee just got hijacked. So I'm going to be able to put some long-range shots in this Banshee as he is smoking right here. Right here, I unfortunately go for the flag and I safe to my teammate to cap. But as you can see right here, I'm going to make the film go forward a little bit more. Um, there are actually three enemy players pushing up 
um, from their side. And there's a guy who's once again sneaked around behind. And this is why I took out this guy with such brutality because of players like this guy. There's also a player sitting over here. So what happened here was a miscommunication in the game. Basically, most of my teammates said, go ahead and capture, go ahead and capture. And I'm going to point out that um, we do have two people inside B base, but that's not enough. You want to have them kind of either sitting on this area or in this area or kind of over here in this area, maybe even behind this barrier, which is a great way, way little place to hide right here. Be ready to jump down here for the flag. Um, as it was, we had this enemy player end up sneaking behind, and you can see how devastating this is because he's going to be able to pull the flag off. And I'm going to quickly switch back to my player perspective right here as the enemy players do pull the flag off of top center and are going to be able to run this back to their base. Really good job by our sniper here who was able to take out at least two enemy players before they're able to lift the flag up. Um, what they're trying to do is lift the flag up into their lift because once they do that, um, it's, a, it's a straight shot off of this little ledge and they are able to easily drop down and it's really hard to get the flag back up once you've dropped back down. It's kind of like on Ragnarok, once you drop a neutral flag down to your side of top middle hill, it's kind of hard. So unfortunately I can't go after that flag as I see these two players who are also still flanking and I'm going to try to take out this Banshee as well. Um, this enemy Banshee player and the majority of the enemy players on the enemy team are very, very skilled. And this is one of the reasons I uploaded the gameplay. And one of the reasons um, Godly World, for example, is also a really good player. One of the reasons I uploaded this film was simply due to the fact that the enemy players know what they're doing. And as you can see here, they do have some control of top center right now. And they're not capping the flag right now because they don't have full, complete control of top center. We have a bunch of teammates pushing up and really giving them heck top center. So they're being very, uh, they're communicating, in other words. We know that they're communicating. And uh, via their KDs that you're going to see at the end of the game, you're going to know that these players were very, very good. Um, as it is, I, I, our gameplay and communication are so good that it, it doesn't come across as apparent um, that the enemy players are extremely skilled. I throw a little pre-nade there to make sure that he doesn't push up. Um, that's more of a preventive nade than a, than a pre-nade, pre I'd say. Unfortunately, that incineration cannon, incineration cannon goes off target. I'm gonna putting some more shots on the Godly's world, but again, I'm just staying alive here on this position. Going to the bubble shield, immediately drop back out because I just want the bubble shield to jump start my shield a few seconds early. I'm gonna look below our lift right here, and right here is a great example as my team is getting really solid shots on this enemy player. You will probably wonder why I didn't die here, and it's mainly because um, my teammates were able to take out this player who was um, actually shooting me from their base. Really good shots by my um, my teammates who were up here on B base. You can't see them right now, but really good job by them. Waiting to my shields until my shields regenerate. I'm gonna really embarrass Godly's world here with a, a pretty brutal four shot. I think that, that was a four shot right there. Um, I'm just gonna look around, make sure that um, we don't have too many players pushing. I grabbed some ammunition from him because I was extremely low. And then a push back, using the thrust attack very effectively here. I'm gonna stay alive. Gutsy maneuver running back to B base, but I think it worked well overall. Now, right here, once again, the enemy team has not captured the flag because they do not have control of top center. And many, many players would not understand this tactic, but I can assure you what they are doing is the correct tactic. If they reset the flag, their flag would reset right here in the middle of all of us, and we'd basically get a free cap flag cap. But not only on top of that, we're going to be able to get the next Banshee because we're all in the next Banshee spawn right there. And we're going to be able to relay, use that Banshee to relay the next flag and the next flag back. At this point in the game, with us being two flag caps above the enemy team, they cannot afford to have a rash capture, which is why they're holding on to it. I get some really good shots on players just, again, staying alive. What you're seeing me do is only possible, my, my movement from left to right, how I'm just openly rushing across this area is only possible due to my teammates who are rigorously shooting the enemy team base. This is why our teammate was so good and worked so well during this game as I pick up yet another assist that I'm not going to be able to clean up. Godly's World pushes up this ramp and gets absolutely melted. And um, as this Warthog char tries to charge blindly across the map, I'm not sure exactly why he did that as I get the headshot. I want you to notice in the bottom left-hand corner on my kill feed right below the headshot medal at Godly's World just quit off the enemy team. That is the only player who did quit off the enemy team, and he was almost a 2.0 KD, or I think he actually was above that, but we'll see at the end of the game. 
Um, them being only one player down is unfortunate, but um, after this point in the game, I do want to switch over to Blazin, who just charged by me. And he's, my, as you can see, Flash the Fifth is above their base right now, doing work in the Banshee. And Blazin and Duck are going to push down with CC. Um, and they're going to really try to uh, push the enemy base right here. Now, this is a questionable maneuver, or at least I thought it was a questionable maneuver at first. But Blazing Spartan called out to me as he was running right here. He said, hey, Genesis. I need to get into the enemy base because if I can get into their base, I can grab the flag and suicide by throwing myself off the map. Now, why in the world would he want to do this? Well, I'm going to show you real quickly. This is a perfectly executed rush. I'll, I'll view it in third person. As you can see Blazing Spartan right here camoing, and he's using teammate fire once again. We're really peppering the enemy team base. As he charges in here with his teammate, Jelly is right behind, providing really good enemy team fire. And Blazing Spartan has already gotten the Flag Carrier weak one shot. He's going to charge in here and get the kill, and the flag drops here. He's going to grab the flag. Now, the majority of players right here would pause and go, Hey, what I need to do is grab this flag, jump right back out here, and run up this rock ramp back to our base. And this is incorrect, mainly because the entire enemy team is likely to spawn on this side of the map. You can see the teammate just spawning in there, or the enemy player just spawning in there mainly because they're not really going to be in the center of the map because we're annihilating them, and our teammate has general control of this area, and our Banshee is getting kills like crazy. So the only place they're going to be able to spawn, because our teammate is in their base right now, is on the right-hand side of their base in this general cave system area. If our teammate were to push back out, the only way we'd be able to get back up this side rock ramp without being swarmed by five to eight, five to seven players, since they only have seven players on the team right now, would be if our Banshee just annihilated the crap out of them, and everyone top middle was looking down this ramp as these players charge over and try to stop our flag carrier. As it is, our flag carrier does, pulls a really, really good maneuver because he's going to suicide himself off the map, jumping off the back of the map, suiciding, Suicide. and he's going to jump top, jump the flag or reset it top center. And that's a very advanced maneuver that a lot of people really, really wouldn't clue into. A really good maneuver by Blazing Spartan's part. I'm just kind of repeating myself here, but I, just really good good play. Switching back to my first-person perspective, um, I believe uh, that teammate has the flag. Expert use of the thruster pack as I dodge out of the way. Unfortunately, that ghost is not going to be taken out. Um, unfortunately, my teammate does end up dying with the flag, but um, karma of karma, uh, or uh, luck of luck, uh, Blazing Spartan is there at the base to help my teammate destroy this ghost, and he puts in the flag that he helped Suicide off the map to get in the first place. So really good job on his part once again. Now, Blazing Spartan called out to me, hey, hey, I'm about to cap, I'm about to cap, so I'm gonna make sure that I'm on this capture plate or this reset plate right as I run it back to our capture plate or delivery plate in our base. The plate is simply the place where you interact with capture or pick up the flag. Now Blazing Spartan does try to pick me up in the Warthog here, but there's not a whole lot of need to do so. As I'm going to push back to our base with this flag as my teammates do hold top center. There is no need to help your flag carrier back to top center, uh, I'm sorry, back to your base, unless he's being shot at. Because you have a 30 second reset time, unless a vehicle charges the base, there's no need to um, come back to the base with your teammate who has the flag. Now I reset that only because I knew my teammates were ready to get the flag. And you can see, um, I want to go over briefly what types of ways there are to run the flag. You can run out here, grab the flag, and then run it straight back to top center, which is good if the enemy players are all over this general area, okay? However, it's basically good to grab the flag and throw yourself off here and get behind this hill as my teammate is using expertly for cover because it, it prevents players from shooting you. For example, this player uh, prevents players from shooting you if you can drop down here. So Essentially, when you grab the flag, you can drop down here. You want to get behind this rock as fast as possible. Or you can run up this ramp, and if you start beginning to be shot in the back, you can drop down here just like my teammate does right now. And then you can sort of come around, and you can even lift up. So, for example, if you start being shot from over here, you can even then lift straight back up and have full teammate support as most of your players are, should be top center. So I just wanted to point that out. There's a few different ways you can run the flag there. But overall, it's the safest way just to drop down and get behind this rock and get to the lift as fast as possible, in my opinion. As it says, this is the final flag cap in the game. Really good callouts by my teammates throughout this game. And overall, 
really good team arc now. You may be wondering why in the world is my teammate throwing grenades here? Well, I want to briefly go over the fact that this is the final flag cap. It sincerely does not matter anything else we do top center right now. The only reason anyone would say top center is to get the next Banshee, and it's not coming up anytime soon. So what we're going to be doing is just going back to our base, and you'll see me do this here in a second, and that's why some of my teammates are here. Um, and two of my teammates are just cleaned up this guy who was trying to make a last just attempt to stop our flag carry, because that's the last flag. Nothing else matters except where that last flag is. Um, so you can pull back to your base completely and just make sure. My teammate asked me if he can cap, and I'm like, yes, it's the last flag. Of course you can cap. So we end the game with a solid victory. Now, for those of you who are not convinced that we are facing good players, I'm going to go over the stat screen and the enemy team's stats very quickly here at the end of the film. All right, so at the end here, we're actually going to go over my team's overall KD and the enemy's overall KD, and then we'll actually look into some in-depth stats of the enemy team's overall KDs from their entire matchmaking experience that they've played online. And what you're going to notice is that teamwork almost always trumps KD ratio, okay? Whether you're working together as a team and performing and you know the game type in the map well is really going to pull out for you in the end. Now, I'm just going to go over some overall general things, mainly pointing out the fact that Blazing Spartan and I went very um, positive and also had the most score on a team because Blazing Spartan had the most flag time. But overall, I want you to notice how all of our, my teammates had 100 score or above. Now, there's one who did not, um, and he was our random. Um, he was not actually in our lobby when we started searching and matchmaking. And he did actually was the, our only teammate also who went negative just by one kill, of course. Moving on to the enemy team side, all of them went below 100 score and all of them were negative. And this gets even more kind of embarrassing for their team in a way when you actually start to look at their individual player stats. So let's go to HB Bobby Miles right here at the very top of their team list and he got six kills seven deaths you can see he has 40,000 kills and 21,000 deaths in online matchmaking this is about a 1.89 KD so he gets almost two kills per every death in online matchmaking in that game he got six kills seven deaths so and he was the top performing player in their team as far as total score was concerned so that means he probably did the most or grabbed the flag or something of that nature that's not too bad on his part he just went negative one but it gets much better than that. As we move on to Arm the Boss, he has separated by X's there, who, embarrassingly enough, has 116,000 kills in online matchmaking and 29,000 deaths. This almost amounts to a 4.0 KD, getting four kills per every death. And he gets three kills and five deaths, not doing much for his team at all in that game. Um, moving on, Let's go to Megatron's Wrath further down the list here, and we can see here that he has 67,000 kills, 39,000 deaths, and a 1.73 KD, but he only gets three kills and seven deaths. Let's move on even further, and um, we have ZZ, S-O-Z-Z, -Z, who got three kills and ten deaths. Now, this player is more, you know, this is what I'd expect from more of this type of caliber player. Notice that he has 40,000 kills and 49,000 deaths, meaning he's negative 9,000. He only gets, he gets less than one kill for every death, which is not optimal. You want to be at least getting one kill per every death. Um, you want to aim for like one and a half kills or two kills per every death if you can possibly manage. So him getting three kills and 10 deaths is very normal. Um, but that is the only player on their team who was actually negative in terms of stats. Um, moving on, we have um, Ice. We got three kills and nine deaths, almost performing just as bad and actually underperforming score-wise by five points from their negative player, um, ZZSOZ. And this guy has a 2.28 KD with over 100,000 kills in online matchmaking and under 50,000 deaths. Definitely a 2.0 KD and only gets three kills and nine deaths. Very embarrassing for this player. Um, moving on here. We have the A team who got two kills and seven deaths, and he is a 1.41 KD, but only got two kills and seven deaths. Now, again, this is more more of a reasonable assumption because this guy is not above a 1.5 KD, so him getting two kills, seven deaths is pretty um, 
like it's not really a noticeable factor. But as we move on to these uh, last two players, we have another player um, who's along the same lines, 95,000 kills, 68,000 deaths, 1.4 KD. It's one kill, five deaths. That's kind of normal. But the last player, the player who actually ends up quitting from the game, Godly's World, who I killed three times, um, he has a 20.48 KD. And in that game, he got two kills and eight deaths before quitting. Okay. Now, guys, he has 71,000 kills in online matchmaking and only a little bit over 3,000 deaths. What this essentially means is that Godly's World and the other player who had like 116,000 kills, they are boosting their KD. Now, um, it's mainly this player, though. Godly's World, you do not, you don't get a 20 KD, you know, kill KD. You're getting 20 kills or plus per every death unless you're playing big team battle with a team. That just doesn't happen. No one is that good in any other playlist that I am that I am aware of at all. I've never seen KDs like this that have been legitimate. What I mean by this is, um, oftentimes in big team battle, you can hold the objective, which means that instead of capping the final flag, and you have that final flag in your base, instead of capping that and ending the game, you simply hold it there while all your teammates run out and just destroy the enemy team over and over and over again with banshees and vehicles and snipers and mantises and everything, okay, because the enemy team is not that great. And another thing that this, these players will consistently do, as you saw in the game, is they will quit out of games so that their KD doesn't suffer and they can, you know, get the warm fuzzy feelings inside. To all those type of players, I say screw you, okay? And the reason I'm saying this is because winning and ultimately performing as a team is what is looked up to in the competitive circle. You can make social playlist more competitive it's players like these that trash that and go i just want to look at myself and focus on myself and my own stats because that's all i care about and that's the players who really really um, get looked down on by the com competitive community and i i really don't blame um, that whole stereotype um, for looking down on them um, for being the tryhard because these players look like they're tryhards, and then they get, you know, two kills, eight deaths in a game. Um, so that's, that's just my little rant there. I hope you understand why I really delved into in-depth into the enemy team's KD, because that game that we just played against them, 5 0 them on neutral flag, that is not up to the performance levels of what this team should have been able to achieve. Even with that one player who is negative 9,000, that should not have been able to slow them down. They only got decent control of the top middle base maybe once or twice for a very brief period of time. That's just embarrassing overall. I don't mean to point out these specific players and say they're bad individually. I mean overall their teamwork, especially since they were holding the flag in their base, obviously communicating somewhat and obviously working as a team because we matched them all at once. They were all a team. Um, there's no excuse for their performance. So guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and hope this last explanation wasn't too long and helped you understand KD a little bit better and that it's not just about how high your KD is. It's about teamwork and overall working together. And guys, I'll see you guys in the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace.